Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself Amata, but as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things off with some news regarding Xbox Scarlet and the potentiality for VR. So, what we have here is two patterns which have been unearthed, so as always with patterns, do take these with a pinch of salt, because while these patterns are undoubtedly legit, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll ever see an actual product hit the shelves. However, with all that aside, these were discovered by the Twitter user Walking Cat, and basically we have again two patterns that describe a 6 degrees of freedom input device as well as a virtual reality floor mat. So the images which you can see on screen show stylus, motion controllers, Xbox Connect camera, boundary mat and of course the all important VR headset. Now you might wonder, like, boundary mat? Are we talking like DDR, DDR dance mat here? I mean, <laughs> that's bringing back some memories, but probably not. I mean, the one most likely to actually see release, I think, is a VR headset from Microsoft. The Xbox Scarlet definitely has the meat and the raw power under the hood to actually give us Microsoft's first foray into VR. Of course, they've done AR with HoloLens, but has never really been for consumers, at least at its current iterations. So it would be nice, potentially, to see them attempted, obviously... Sony has seen moderate success with the PSVR, it is the most best-selling out of the currently available VR options simply because, well, it's the cheapest and obviously you still get fairly decent performance and the collection of games that support it is not too bad. But it still has the same problems as other VR headsets in that there's not really any big system sellers, I suppose you could say. But I think that's hopefully going to improve over time as VR itself improves and maybe Microsoft entering the ring is that little kick that the industry needs. Now of course this patent also mentions a Kinect camera and you may recall that recently Microsoft said that they will not, or repeat not, be having a 4K camera with the Xbox Scarlet. This was contrary to various reports that stated that the dev kits were actually coming with one. So I speculated in my video on this that this could mean that there's just no camera at all or it could mean it's just not 4K and Microsoft's being a bit sneaky with their wording. It's tough to say, but it is important to keep in mind that they may have considered a Kinect camera or a Kinect based thing or a camera, even if it's not anything to do with Kinect, but maybe decided to go against it because, well, Kinect didn't really go well so for them the either time they have tried it. So let me know your thoughts, guys. Would you be interested in a VR headset from Microsoft for the Xbox Scarlet or is VR just yet to really convince you to make the jump because it's not exactly cheap, even at the cheaper end of the scale. But let's move on shall we and let's discuss the 5500 shaped elephant in the room. So there's quite a bit to discuss here but let's talk facts first. So what we actually have is an official announcement for the Radeon RX 5500 series with GDDR6 and we have some specifications being shared and here's where the problems begin because there seems to be a lot of confusion about the specs. This is one of the most confusing soft launches I've seen, personally speaking. But let's put that aside for now. What do we know? We're going to see three SKUs, the 5500M, a mobile GPU, 5500, or the 5500 XT. Now it's important to note that AMD do not actually say ever the words 5500 XT in the presentation, but they do say the word series. So it's implied and it's kind of expected and I'll be surprised not to see it but it's worth mentioning that they don't actually come out and say the words 5500 XT. So throughout their presentation AMD compared this card directly to the GTX 1650 and RX 480 and does better than both. Now the card that we see being compared in the slides which you'll be enjoying on screen is the 4 gigabyte variant. However, one of the slides directly mentions that the series goes up to 8 gigabytes. So this is where the evidence continues to kind of solidify for there being a 5500 XT in existence because, well, we're most, most likely going to see a 5500 XT with 8 gigabytes. But specs-wise, we also see 22 compute units, 14.08 stream processors, 
up to 5.2 T flops, up to 17 17 megahertz, up to a 1845 boost clock, again up to that 8 gigs of GDR6 memory, and 128 bit memory interface. So here's where the confusion begins when it comes to the TDP of the actual card. So Anantech.com initially said that the TDP of the 5500 was 150 watts. And then they updated their article to say, oh, actually, sorry, AMD got in touch and they said it's 110 watts. Then AMD updated their website from 110 watts to 150. So immediately you're like, I'm sorry? Doesn't stop there, my friends. No, uh, we also see on this slide that 1717 and 1845 that I literally just mentioned, those words just came out of my mouth mere moments ago. Yet on the website, it showed 1845 megahertz and a boost of 1670. Now there's also something glaring, and I do mean glaring by its emission. The price, not to mention the release date. We do not have either of those things, not even a hint, not even a release window. And not even having a vague price at this stage is just like, huh? And there's not even a pic picture of a single custom model. So this launch is just strange, to be quite frank with you. I don't really know what's happened. I expect a statement is going to be incoming from AMD shortly about the confusion that's surrounding the 5500. And another thing that I've actually neglected to mention, apologies um, for it accidentally leaving out, we're not actually going to be seeing a reference design launch to the public. We're only going to see custom AIB designs, which we have not seen hide nor hair of. So, yes, we officially know what the 5500 is, but we don't know how much it's going to cost or when it's going to come out. Thank hopefully, we're going to get that information quite soon. I just hope that AMD clears up the situation rather swiftly, to be quite honest with you, but enough of all that. Let's move on, shall we, to Camp Intel. And this time around, we're actually seeing a price cut for a couple of 9th gen processors, and we're also seeing a couple of announcements on top of that as well. But let's start things off with the price cuts as they have announced a reduction in price for eight SKUs, which range from the very tip top, the 9900KF, all the way down to the i3-9100F, because it is going to be the KF and F series, which launched some time ago, that are going to be getting a slight slimming down of the price tag. Let's actually go through the prices as to what they were to what they are now. Now, don't get too excited they're not a significant price cut but still a price cut nonetheless so the old price for the 9900 excuse me kf was 488 dollars is now 463 the 9700 kf was 374 is now 349 the 9600 was 262 it now is 237 the 9350 kf was 173 and is now 148 the 9700F was 332 and is now 298. The 9500 was 192 and is now 167. The 9400 is 182 down to 157. And the 9100F is 122 down to $97. So again, not a significant price cut, um, but still nice to see them trimming it down just a little bit. I would like to see a bit more of a significant reduction, but hey, better than nothing. But I also mentioned some announcements as well. We see an official unveiling of the Xeon W2200 lineup, which as you might guess is Cascade Lake, Lake X based. It has various SKUs being announced at varying prices. Now here is where we see a real difference in price versus what we actually expected. Just for example, the flagship is about a grand cheaper in US dollars compared to the previous flagship. So obviously we're seeing significantly reduced prices across the W2200 family here. So again, we're gonna go through it. The top end is the most expensive. Um, it is the Xeon W2295 at $1,333. The 2275 is 1,112. The 2265 is $944. The 2255 is 778. The 2245 is, uh, sorry, 667. The 2235 is $555. And the 225 is 444, and the 2223 is 294. So you can see on the screen as well all of the specs that they're bringing to the table across all of these price points. So you can see they all have varying clock speeds, but the one constant is, of course, the 
uh, PCIe lanes, but we also see, for example, on the top end is 18 core 36 threads going down to 14 cores 28, and then 12 to 24, and so on and so forth as we move down the stack. However, that's not the only announcement that Intel had today for us, my friends. No, no, no. They also had a reveal of the 10th Gen X series, which is four SKUs, a 18 core, 14 core, 12 core, and 10 core processor. So what price and specs do I do I have for you here, or do do Intel have for you here? I suppose just to say, well, we have the very top end, the 10980XE, which has a base clock speed of 3.0, all core turbo speed of 3.8, and a turbo boost frequency of 4.6. And we see 18 core 36 threads, and that is a price tag of $979. The 10940X is 3.3 base with a 4.4, 4 4.1, sorry, should I say, all core boost, and this is at 14 cores 28 threads, $784. And the i9 10920X is 3.5 base and 4.3 all core turbo speed boost at $689. And the i9 10900X is 3.7 boost with a all core boost of, um, sorry, 3.7 base, sorry, should I say, with an all core boost of 4.3. And again, the price tag is $590. And we are expecting to see these processors launch in November and they are targeting AMD's third generation Ryzen processors. Specifically, of course, given the thread and core count, the Threadripper third generation processors, which are apparently going to start things off according to information recently released from AMD, a 24 core 48 thread SKU. So, the HEDT war is officially on. There is one important thing that is worth mentioning with this new series, however, it is still the 14nm process, but obviously, as you might have guessed throughout my specs and price readings just there, we do see lower pricing per core, as well as higher single on all core turbo clock speeds versus the ninth generation, but of course, these are HEDD chips. So, that is me done for this video, packed full of announcements. Let me know your thoughts on everything discussed here today. As always, the support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Just help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.